Welcome to our True Potential Performance Monitor for November. So today I'm going to analyze stock market returns and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what are the key issues in markets at the moment and there's one issue that I'm going to focus on which is inflation but particularly rising inflation in the UK. Okay so let's have a look at the returns now and as you can see basically equities are showing what well, quite mixed returns but bonds in general have been quite negative. And that's because we've seen a sell-off in UK gilts and in UK corporate bonds. However, overseas bonds have fared a little bit better, and that's because we've seen a bit of a currency pickup in this area. One thing I would say is, you know, investors are constantly looking for yield. Yields are very low in the more traditional areas of the bond market, but actually investors can look outside of these areas to so the more esoteric parts of the market, so things such as global high yields or emerging market bonds. Okay, so let's have a look at equities. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is Japanese equities, and as you can see, they've been one of the best performers for the month of October. And actually, when you look at Japan, I mean, what we're seeing is that the Japanese companies have become much more shareholder friendly. And as well as that, obviously, you've got things such as structural reform, economic reform rumbling along in the background. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about is currency. And as you can see from the graph, the UK, so sterling, has devalued, has depreciated against all major currencies. And actually, you know, that is a real negative when you're traveling abroad. But if you're a sterling-based investor who's holding overseas investments, that will actually improve your return. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's look at what is our key theme, which is rising inflation in the UK. And you may well have seen in the news, Bank of England, they've come out with their new expectation of inflation levels for next year, which is around about 2.7%, which is significantly higher than what we've seen over the last 12 months. I think with inflation is, inflation is completely normal. Now, if you have a, a normal functioning economy, then you would expect prices of goods and services to rise year on year. But where the problems lie is if prices increase, but wages do not keep up the pace with those increases, or if you see static movement in wages, because then what happens is you end up with a squeeze on disposable income for the general public, and that can cause stagnation in the economy. Okay, so I guess the most pertinent question is, what investments work well traditionally in a rising inflation environment? Okay, so the investments that traditionally work well have been things such as gold, property, inflation-linked bonds, and actually most equities tend to work well in that kind of environment. The area of the market that tends to struggle can be sort of more traditional areas of fixed interest. And actually what you tend to find is rising inflation leads to rising yields, which can potentially lead to falling bond prices. Okay, so the final area that I was gonna concentrate on is cash. So what does rising inflation mean for cash? Now if you think if you hold cash in a bank account, if you hold cash within an ISA, we're in quite a low interest rate environment at the moment. I mean, cash within ISAs, I guess the average is around about half a percent interest at the moment. Obviously, if inflation levels are higher than half a percent, which they are currently, they're forecast to be much higher than that, then actually, by holding cash in these products, you're eroding away at your wealth. So what can you do? I think when you look at cash going forward in this environment, you will not receive a decent return on cash. Investors need to think a little bit more about risk and risk levels and potentially think about taking a little bit more risk. Here at True Potential, we offer our multi-manager, multi-asset, True Potential portfolios. I think when we look at these portfolios, you know, for investors that are seeking income, we have our income portfolios. They produce a yield of 4% a year. But as well as that, they're set up to potentially offer you both capital preservation, 
but also the chance for some capital appreciation. We recognise that to beat the return on cash, some sort of risk taking is inevitable. We know that in prior periods, diversification has been shown to reduce risk. Here at True Potential, the portfolios we offer, offer diversification to an even higher level compared to the competitors in the marketplace. And that is around investment style. What this means, so for us, our objective is to, to manage volatility levels over time. And we encourage investors to take a longer term view when investing. This helps transform risk from something that's quite short term to actually a long term opportunity. By putting all of these things together, it helps the investor to reach their goal, allowing them to enjoy the fruits of their investment later on.